Hi, and welcome to ORT1 Human Vision and Function. This is part two, understanding vision, color vision, and 3D perception. And topic one in this series is about what is vision and how is it measured. My name is Mary Vukisevich, and I will be taking you through this part of the class. In order to understand what vision is, we need to revisit the anatomy of the eye and consider how this all fits in with the visual pathway from the previous topics that we learned about in this subject. So remember in section one, we learned about all the different structures of the eye from the front or anterior to the back or posterior, and that the cornea, iris and lens are anterior structures and the retina, choroid and optic nerve are posterior structures. On this diagram we can see the cornea is listed as number five and the iris is number six. The lens is shown at number 11 and these are at the front of the eye. Then the retina is number 13 and the optic nerve is number 14 and these are located posteriorly at the back of the eye. Hopefully you've also uh, be able to remember what the other structures are and you can label all the numbers from 1 through to 14 yourself. I want to pay particular attention to the retina which is located at the posterior part of the eye as I said. The retina is comprised of two types of receptor cells, the rods and the cones, and the macula which is the area at the very center of the retina, contains only cones. The density of the cones is greater here than for any other region across the retina. And on the image shown here, the macula uh, is circled with the yellow circle and the blue circle shows the optic nerve. And you'll see the blood vessels, the arteries and veins, uh, lead out from the optic nerve and circulate around the retina. So let's look at the rods and cones or the photoreceptors which are contained in the retina in more detail. Both the rods and the cones are long slender cells and their name describes their outer segments. So the rods are very good for vision in dim lighting conditions. So at night time especially. And images are in shades of black and white. There are many, many um, rods and many more than the cones across the retina. So approximately 110 to 125 million rods contained in one retina. What's especially important is there are none at the fovea. And they increase in number from the fovea out to the periphery, or rather, beyond the fovea, out to the periphery. The cones are best for vision in bright light and their ability is to resolve fine detail and colour. There are about six to seven million cones in the human retina and these are most dense at the fovea and decrease in number in the periphery. This image here shows the rods which are shown in green and they're the cells with the long rod shaped outer segment and the cones are the ones next to them in blue and they have the cone shaped outer segment. This image also shows how the rods and cones fit in with the rest of the retinal layers. So light will enter the eye from the cornea and eventually go through all the structures and strike the retina at the posterior section of the eye and the rods and cones will receive those photons of light. So as I said light strikes the photoreceptors. This is converted into an electrochemical signal and it then travels down the visual pathway to the visual cortex of the brain for interpretation. So that's essentially a, a summary of vision, but we also want to measure vision and visual acuity. So what exactly is visual acuity? 
Well, vision is made up of several things, actually, and they include things like light, form sense, and color sense. And when we test a patient's visual acuity, we're essentially assessing their ability to perceive the form of an object. Visual acuity is determined by the smallest retinal image, which can be clearly distinguished at a certain distance. And usually in the clinic, this distance is 6 metres, or if you're from America, 20 feet. For the purposes of this subject, we don't need to go into any more detail than this, but more advanced classes about visual acuity will teach you about the visual angle and the nodal point subtended by an object. Of course, we're not going to be touching on those things here. So please watch the next video in this playlist, which is narrated by Nick Smith, and it explains how to test visual acuity. And of course, then, there will be um, some further reading for you to do. And after this, we will move on to understanding color. Please watch the next video in this playlist narrated by Nick Smith which explains how to test visual acuity. Don't forget the supplementary reading and the revision questions. And after this we'll move on to understanding colour vision.